Hello again. I am um, going to talk today about tree diagrams and sigma notation, and hopefully you'll be able to follow along with us with um, the handout that you've downloaded from the My Class website. If you haven't done so, please stop the video and do it, because um, it won't be much of a lesson unless uh, you do that. Okay, so a tree diagram. I know a lot of people come to me and ask me what a tree diagram is or how to do one, which kind of puzzles me because uh, it's something so basic and so fundamental that it's how sometimes uh, a person can explain things. Um, now, basically, basically we have, uh, you know, let's say we do a coin flip or something. We can get heads or tails on our first coin flip. Now on our second coin flip, we can get heads or tails again. So if our first outcome was heads, our second outcome could be heads or tails. And the same thing for tails. Well, if we have tails, our second outcome also could be heads or tails. It doesn't really change anything, the fact that our first flip was one way or the other. Now, for our third flip, we get heads or tails. Again, regardless of the outcome, this is always true. And this is our tree diagram. This is what's called a tree diagram, where we begin with, you know, uh, a very finite number of outcomes, in this case two, and we move on up. Each time we flip a coin, we increase the number of outcomes simply because of past outcomes, outcomes from the past. So this could be your first flip, this is your second flip of the coin, and this is your third flip of the coin, and these three flips uh, will um, obviously greatly enhance your um, possible outcomes. So if you look at the third flip, we can actually get evidence as to how many outcomes are possible when we flip a coin three times. And it looks as though there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There are eight outcomes from three flips of a coin. All right, so now if we, uh, and that eight outcomes is like two cubed. We flip the coin three times and each flip had two outcomes. So that's two to the power of three, or if you like, the number of outcomes in our first flip times the number of outcomes in our second flip times the number of outcomes in our third flip all work out to eight. It doesn't matter which way you say it. And uh, if you wanted to list them out, of course, you can say heads, 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 tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, and heads, tails, tails, and then tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, and finally tails, tails, tails. You can see that either way you do it, is it's eight different outcomes, uh, you know, uh, and some people get all mixed up on one thing or the other, but I'm, I'm treating each outcome as distinct. I could ask you a different question. How many outcomes contain two heads? Well, how many outcomes contain two heads? That's a good question. So if we look at the ones containing two heads, there's this one, there's this one, there's this one, and that's it. Three of the eight outcomes contain two heads. How many outcomes contain three tails? Well, there's only this one, and that corresponds to this part of the tree here. The ones that contain two heads are those parts of the tree, this one and this one. So, so these are all the ones containing two heads if we refer back to the tree diagram. Now, let's move on. Let's move to a question, a specific question from the handout. Um, and like anything, question number one um, seems to be a good place to start. Uh, if you must choose two elective courses, one from three possible science courses and one from four possible humanities courses, how many different course selections are there? Okay, so we have three possible science courses. We're going to annotate them as S1, S2, and S3. 
and we have to only choose one of them. Well, our first choice can either be S1 or S2 or S3. Well, that's a total of three choices. So this is our first choice. The second choice has to be one of the four humanities. And we'll symbolize them as H1, H2, H3, H4. Okay, so, and that will be our second choice. Now, if we had chosen S1, that gives us four choices for humanities. That's what this tree diagram says. If we had chosen S2, that's four cho still four choices for humanities. If it's S3, that's still four choices for humanities. So given that we have three ways of choosing sciences, we also have four ways of choosing humanities which is 12. And if we prove that by counting the leaves in the tree diagram, we can see that there's four here, there's four leaves here, and there's four leaves here for a total of 12. So it actually squares up with what we're going to learn as one of our first lessons uh, in counting theory, the fundamental counting principle that 3 times 4 is 12. Um, three being the number of outcomes of our first stage and four being the number of outcomes of our second stage. So, um, now, uh, numbers, number two is the same. It just has, uh, I think, another stage in it. Uh, four choices for the appetizer, two choices for the entree, three choices for dessert. Now your tree has three levels to it, and uh, I might ask you to uh, try that one out yourself. Number three says, how many different license plates can be made that consist of three digits followed by three letters? Uh, that one, uh, to be really honest with you, you can't really do a tree diagram of that because there's millions of outcomes, amazing, amazingly huge numbers of outcomes. Even if you did three letters followed by three numbers, that's three times three times three times three times three times three. That's three to the power six. That's an enormous number of choices, uh, you know, uh, even for three letters and three numbers. But what if you had 10 uh, numbers and 26 letters? Um, that's going to be enormous, enormous. So um, I would avoid that one and maybe wait for Chapter 4, uh, at least until I get past 4.1, before you can tackle a question like that. And, and then that wouldn't be really a tree diagram question, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, number 4 is a question that's near and dear to my heart, uh, only because it involves molecular biology. And um, we have... Uh, nucleotides um, composed of three sequences of three bases in order to make a codon. So here we have, you know, our four bases, ad adenine, cytosine, guanine, and thymine. Now, um, you don't count uracil because that appears in RNA, but in DNA you have these four bases, and they, and they appear in combinations of three. And the bases are allowed to repeat. So I can have AAA, AAC, CCC. These are all these are all fine. I can also switch the order. If I switch the order, like AAC divide, um, as opposed to CAA, that's a different amino acid that it codes for. So you have to be careful um, that, yes, order matters here. So I have a choice for my first codon of A, C, G, and T. And for each of these choices, I have four choices for the next codon because I'm allowed to repeat my codons. And I'm allowed to repeat my amino acids, uh, that is. And uh, for each of those choices, for my third nucleotide, I actually have four more. So that's really four times four times four. If you want to write a tree diagram big enough, you're going to need more space than I have here on this screen. Um, but it'll end up being 4 times 4 times 4, or 64 
uh, possible codons that you can use to um, um, to sequence DNA. Now, some of those codons are amino acids. Uh, in fact, almost all of them are. Some of them are start and stop codons, and some of them, as far as we know, don't make any sense, but apparently uh, missense codons um, are emerging as actually making sense, <laughs> as uh, given recent news that I've heard uh, coming from scientific, uh, um, scientific writing. At least that's what I heard on CBC Radio anyway. Um, so we have 64 possible codons possible and you can make a tree diagram. In fact, one of them, if you, if you had to just look at one of them, I think you can see you, you'd already get 16. So I'll go in the same order. And finally, this one. So all codons beginning with A, there are 16 codons beginning with A. It's amazing how discrete math figures into so many areas of uh, genetics. Um, it's rather, rather amazing. But at any rate, uh, you were asked to come up with tree diagrams involving situations that are three bases long and then four bases long, and that'll end up with being 256 uh, for uh, base sequences, and then n bases long. Now, from three bases and four bases, you're asked to come up with a a um, a pattern. I guess you should remember should be able to recognize a number pattern from three bases and four bases and extrapolate it to n bases and see what you get. Um, so for n bases long, that would be, uh, well, again, you, you can actually figure that out, um, hopefully. So anyway, the next um, 